Okay, we are back with the Beatrice Prophecy, and we are on chapter 35. She dreamed of standing on a cliff, and Swelica was beside her. They were looking out to sea, and the wind tasted of salt. It, brew Beatrice's it blew Beatrice's hair around her face. She had her hand on Swelica's head, and the sea was green, and then blue, and then a deeper blue, and then green again. She heard someone call her name. She turned. Jack Dory was coming toward her. She smiled at him, and then she looked back at the sea. And now Jack Dory was beside her, next to her, his shoulder brushing up against her. There are seahorses in the sea, said Beatrice. Seahorses? asked Jack Dory. Yes, said Beatrice. Horses of the sea. And with those words, the, wor the wind blew harder, meaner. The sea went from green to black, and then it tilted and became a dark hallway and Beatrice was running down the hallway running away and also running toward where was she going she was running to the tower room she was looking for her mother mother she shouted mother please she was in castle Abelard and she was running down the hallway but the hallway was so long longer longer than it had ever been before there was no end to it she ran and ran and then suddenly she was in the tower room but her mother was not there a blackbird sat in the window and he blinked his dark eyes and opened his black beak and said he has taken her Beatrice fell to her knees. Who? He said to the bird. Where? The cold wind blew through the room and the blackbird was gone and there was nothing anymore and the entire world was empty. Please, she cried. And then she was awake and Jack Dory was staring at her. You fell asleep again, he said, sitting up. Beatrice shook her head and she felt the dream inside of her, the terrible emptiness of the tower room and the wind that blew through it and the blackbird turning to look at her with his dark eyes. He has taken her. Where was her mother? And Swelica pushed Jack Dory aside. She offered Beatrice her ear, and Beatrice took hold of it. I want my mother, said Beatrice. Shh, now, said Jack Dory. Tell me her name. I'm Beatrice of Abelard. The words felt heavy in her mouth. Tell me again, said Jack Dory. I'm Beatrice of Abelard. I'm Beatrice of Abelard. I, said Jack Dory, and he took hold of her hand. You are Beatrice of Abelard. I want my mother. I want Brother Edict. Where is he? I don't know, said Jack Dory. Beatrice felt again the wind from the dream. A cold wind blowing through an empty room. There are too many people to miss, she said. Jack Dory nodded. Aye, he said, there are. And he kept hold of her hand, and Beatrice kept hold of Answelica's ear, and they sat there. So, and they sat so for a long time. Chapter 36. And where was Brother Edict? Just where we left him in the pathless woods, face to face with the black bearded robber. And what was Brother Edict doing? He was remembering the words of his prophecy. There will one day come a girl who will unseat a king and bring about a great change. And the words appeared, appeared before him. They illuminated the darkness around him. Brother Edict was certain that he was now going to die. But he was not afraid. He who was afraid of everything was not afraid. Can you see me now, Father? He said aloud. I am at last not afraid. He laughed. And the bearded man took the knife from between his teeth. Funny is it? It is said Brother Edict. Stop your eye from rolling about like that, said the robber. I cannot, said Brother Edict. He laughed again. Kneel, said the robber. Brother Edict went down to his knees. He closed his eyes and saw the mermaid brush, the mermaid's jewel strewn hair. He saw for some reason his father's hand heavy and battle scarred, and he saw a field of elder his flowers, bright and glowing. And then there appeared in his mind the illuminated letter B. B for Beatrice. He saw her face. Beatrice who wanted to write the mermaid story. Beatrice who would unseat the king. And then an image of Answelica appeared before him. That terrible, wonderful goat. Her ears were glowing and she looked beautiful to him. Everything looked beautiful. The mermaid brush, his father's hands, the flower elder hissed, the letter B, Beatrice, the goat. Everything he saw was outlined in glow, illuminated as if he himself had painted it for the Chronicles of Sorrowing. Stop smiling, said the robber. Brother Edict nodded, yes, yes, he must stop smiling. The words of the prophecy scrolled through his mind. There will one day, there will one day come a girl child. There will one day come a girl child who will unseat a king. There will one day come a girl child who will unseat a king and bring about a great change. And he was glad that those words had come to him. He was glad that Beatrice had come to him and that he had saved her. Well, and that he and the goat had saved her. He was glad to have been a part of the story. Was that enough? That would have to be enough. He opened his eyes and saw in the gloom the robber's knife about his head. Close him, said the robber. I cannot stand how that one eye rolls about. Brother Edict smiled and he closed his eyes and then there came laughter. Brother Edict wondered if he himself was laughing. Had he gone mad? Well, his father would not be surprised. 
He held his hand up to his mouth and touched his lips, and his mouth was closed. It was not him laughing, but somewhere in the dark woods there was laughter. It echoed, it went on and on, and it seemed to fill the world. Brother Edict still held still. He kept his eyes closed, and he felt the outline of Enswellica's hoof on his chest. It burned slightly. Oh, that goat. He would miss her. Take care of her, Brother Edict whispered to the goat. Guard her. Suddenly the laughter ended, and the only no noise was the rustling of the leaves on the trees. Brother Edict stayed on his um, knees, his eyes still closed. Perhaps he was dead, and he did not yet know it. There came a hand on Brother Edict's shoulder. Warm, solid, you are a monk of the Order of the Chronicles of Sorrowing, are you not? Said a voice, I believe that we have mutual friends. Brother Edict opened his eyes. It was so dark, but Brother Edict could see that the black-bearded robber was gone and that in his place stood a man with, long gray, with a long gray beard. This man was smiling. Come with me, said the man, and he held out his hand, and then he laughed and said, Oh, won't you come a gallivanting with me? Brother Edict took a hold of the hand and rose to his feet, alive. Okay, and now we're on 30, chapter 37. Beatrice was sitting with Jack Dory showing him his letters when Enswellica stood suddenly knocking the quill from her hand. It is only Kinnock returning, uh, Jack Dory said to the goat. Kinnock hunched over and entered the tree through the small door, his long beard preceding his body. Someone is with him, Jack Dory whispered. And then Kinnock was standing before them, and behind them was Brother Edict. The monk stood smiling at them, his wild eye dancing in his head. Beatrice, he said, and she flung herself into his arms. He smelled of wool and ink and something sweet maple beatrice he said i've been looking for you she held him as tight as she as she was able her brothers were dead her mother was missing she had lost everything from her life before but here unbelievably was brother edict who loved her whom she loved and she held on to him while swellica did a stiff-legged dance of joy around the two of them cannock said brother edict had been detained by one of the robbers in the woods I came upon him just in time, and we soon sorted everything out. Nothing is more terrifying to evil than joy. Brother Edict said Beatrice. She pulled up, she pulled away from him, and she took hold of his hand, and she looked into his eyes, and the one that was solemn and waiting, the other one dancing and rolling around in his head. Much has happened, I've remembered. I know who I am. She took a deep breath. And she did not take her eyes from his. I am Beatrice of Abelard, and the king has ordered me killed. He killed my brothers and my tutor, and I do not know where my mother is or even if she lives. Brother Edict squeezed her hand, and she drew herself up very straight. I intend to stand up face to face with the king. I will have him tell me where my mother is, and I will call him to account. Jack Dory cleared his throat, but first, he said, before she goes, Beatrice has agreed to teach me to read and write. Brother Edict said, oh, Beatrice... I'm teaching him even now, she said. Brother Edict nodded, and he said, There is a prophecy that is written in the Chronicles of Sorrowing. He spoke very slowly, very carefully, and this prophecy says that there will one day become a girl, child, who will unseat a king and bring about a great change. Beatrice felt the wind from her dream, cold, powerful, blow through her. Much has happened, said Kenok. Much has yet to happen. We will sit together. We will discuss it. And that's chapters 35 well 36 37 yeah 35 36 37 <laughs>